the honor, all the adoration be unto your matchless name. Lord God, we just want to say thank you. We just want to exalt your holy name. We just want to magnify you for indeed you are God. You sit that high and you look low. You are Alpha, you are Omega, the beginning and the end, the one that began, beginning before beginning began. Lord God, we'll call you awesome. You are beautiful. You are caring. You are delightful. You are excellent. You are faithful. You are glorious. You are holy. You are lovely, you are majestic, the Father. You are omniscient, you are precious, you are righteous, you are so great, you are truth, you are the ultimate God. You are victorious in all your ways and we worship you. Yahweh, we give you praise, we give you glory. The beginning and the end, the first and last. The one that sits in the heaven and looks down below. Oh God, we thank you because you sit upon the throne. You have no rival, you have no equal. You have no one that can contain your throne. And for this we bless you. And for this we honor you. And for this we magnify you. For you are God all by yourself. Great and mighty God. Great in counsel. Mighty indeed. Nothing, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing is too difficult for you. And so we bless you. And so we thank you. And so we appreciate you. With a heart of gratitude we say thank you. With a heart of the love we say thank you. We are grateful for your mercy, your grace, your peace, your love towards us. Lord God, your mercy, we give you praise. For your water Christ, we should come boldly before the throne of grace. Where we can find mercy and grace for help in time of need. And so we come through the blood of Jesus. The blood of the the blood of Abel, with the queen and the blood we keep us speak on our behalf, the blood we keep us speak for us, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh God will praise you, that the blood of Jesus will consecrate us, the blood of Jesus will purify us, the blood will sanctify us, the Father, in the name of Jesus, look God will depend on you, our totality is on you, you are the strength of our lives, our hope for years to come, our source, our sufficiency, and so we give you the praise. We give you the glory, but we give you the honor, but you are God all by yourself. We thank you, O God. Look over the creed today, that every darkness in our lives, every darkness in our life, we expose to the light of the world that you will search us, O God. If there be any wicked ways within us, that you will purify us, you will forgive us, you will show us mercy, the Father, we desire your mercy. We desire your mercy, that you will show us mercy. Look, we are dependent on you. Oh God, we need you. We can do nothing apart from you. For you want to close and jump to dinner. But apart from you, we can do nothing. And so we depend on your Holy Ghost. We depend on your spirit. We depend on your mountain. That you will empower us. You will strengthen us. You will give us the grace and the fortitude. To go on now uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, look on the road with a spiral full of many dangers. Uh, we ask so God that you will go before us uh, and make a good way straight. Uh, you will make a way for us when there seems to be no way. Uh, our miracle worker, uh, our promise keeper, uh, the one that the great things that is coming to pass. Uh, oh God, we depend on you. Uh, we we'll look to you, the Father, uh, the author and the finisher of our faith. Uh, we we'll look to you, O oh God. We we'll look unto the youth of us coming our help. You are the strength of our lives. You are our help. And so we depend on you to need to help us. In the name of Jesus, your master we should call upon you. And you will answer. And you will show us great and mighty things that we do not know. And so we we'll call upon you tonight. That you will show up on our behalf. We call upon you tonight. We we'll call upon you for our children. We we'll call upon you for our ministry. We we'll call upon you for our personal lives. We we'll call upon you for our plans. We we'll call upon you for our destiny. Oh God, that you will show us the secret of our lives. You will reveal to us the path we ought to walk with. Walk on, oh God, in the name of Jesus. For the word of God, the path of the righteous is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter under the perfect day. 
Your word also tells us that you will hold us uh, with your right and of righteousness. Uh, you will teach us in the way we ought to go, Lord God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, Lord God, that you will empower us. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, that you will shine your light upon us. Uh, you will speak your word uh, and it will light upon us again, oh God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, when the creature night, uh, that you will cause us to be a different person. Uh, by your words and cries of God, uh, that when Saul came in contact with the prophet, uh, that he prophesied uh, that your spirit came upon him uh, and he became a different man. Uh, look at with the creature night, uh, that your spirit will come upon us uh, and you will change their lives. Uh, you will cause us to be a different people. Uh, you will anoint us to thank God. Uh, you will speak your word and bad. Uh, in the language you will understand the God uh, that you will cause us a God uh, to walk in the path uh, that you have set out for us a God uh, in the name of Jesus uh, you will go ahead of us uh, you will lead us a God uh, you will guide us through the word uh, in the name of Jesus all is for within you Mighty God, we need you. Children of the living God, we need you. With the fruit of night that you will breathe upon us, oh God. You will breathe upon us, oh God. For the water Christ, oh God, and the Lord build a house. The laboring day that build a house. With the fruit of night that you will build us, oh God. You will build us, oh God. You will build our lives. You will build our homes. You will build everything that has to do with us, dear Father. We need you, God, we need you. In a time like this, we need you. That you will type direct us. You will anoint us, oh God. Look and open our eyes, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. We cannot do it on our own unless you take over. Look over the creature night. That you will take over. Look over the creature night. That you will take over. We ask so God that you will show us mercy. Look over the creature that you will show us mercy. Look over the creature night that you will show us mercy. Have mercy upon us, God. 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 We need your mercy in our lives. We need your mercy in our future. We need your mercy in our destiny. Look, God, we need your bring your mercy. But when you are taking us to Lord God, when we look at the things that are seen, when we look at the things that are not seen, when they are the permanent seen, look at you are help us to our actions and things that are above our God. Where Christ seated at the right hand of the Father, in the name of Jesus. Look, I will bring this house before you. Christ, follow us, deliverance ministry. 
here. You are called us, oh God. When the queen that you will build this house, when the queen that the heavens will be opened up on us, when the queen that your angel will be given us, send them the send them the space. Then this house shall be called a house of prayer. Marco Pata Pata. Let us 
house shall we call your house of prayer will decree that your angels of the miracles will begin to walk from the pulpit to the pews to the congregation my dear look how we call forth those those that need to be added to this house we call them forth that you will prove them God you will prove them that you will take that no man can come to the body except by you will decree your God that you will drop them that they will see their hopelessness they will see their helplessness without you that you will draw them Papa draw them Jehovah draw them Oh God, bring them to the foot of the cross. Look and open their eyes. But the Bible says, if I cost them the heat, he is into them that are lost. Whom the color of his own are bright in their eyes. Look and open the decree. Let them be scared in the eyes of the people. We command them to the violated. We command them the hell to draw people right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hey, Kupara Gabande. Look on the water plays and they look unto you and your faces are enlightened and they will not ashamed and so God will look to you and we will not be ashamed will look to you let not our enemy ask us where is our God let not our enemies triumph over us look up by for us look up to battles for us that we shall stand still and see the salvation of the Lord in my comparatabas Look how we don't want to be the same again. We don't want to 
God can be operator in the same level. Oh God, take us higher. Oh God, take us deeper. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to be continuing from there, but I want us to turn our Bibles to Second Corinthians. Glory to God. Second Corinthians chapter 10. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, let's look at um, 
Let's start from verse 3. He said, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. He said, For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hold on there. He says, Cast no. For the weapons of our warfare, when the Bible speaks about weapons, you know, you just say warfare. When we think about warfare, we think about what? War, right? Fighting. <clears throat> and fighting has to do with what? Our mind. Last week we were talking about the soul. And we say laying aside every way, it has to do with the soul. And we say the soul consists of what? The mind, the will, and the emotion. Now we're going to speak on the mind. On that same transition, anybody have a different transition from 1st Corinthians? 2nd Corinthians? <clears throat> What do you have there? Hallelujah. Second Corinthians. I want us to go deeper. That's why I want a different, I want a different translation to for you to coin what I'm trying to say. Second Corinthians. Let's say you know. Louder. Give me the Bible. Thank you. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Bear with me. It says, <clears throat> it says, for though we live in the world, we are not carrying on a worldly war. For the weapons of our warfare are not worldly, but have divine power to destroy struggle. He said, for though we live in this world, we are not worldly. For the weapons of our warfare are what? are not worthy, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Okay. That is um, English. I don't even know what translation is that one. Now let's look at Amplified. I'm going somewhere. Walk with me. Let's look at Amplified. Verse 3 says, For though we walk in the flesh as mortal men, we are not what? Carrying on our spiritual warfare according to the flesh and using the weapons of man. Walk with me. Verse 4 says, the weapon of our warfare are not physical, weapon of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of our fortresses. That is amplified. Let's see New Living Translation. I'm going somewhere, walk with me. He says, verse 3, he says, we are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. King James says what? For the weapon of our weapon are not carnal, but they are mighty to God, right? No, you see, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. He says, for we are humans and we do not wage war as humans do. How does humans wage war? They physically fight, true or false. They have um, guns and knives and this and that, and they fight physical fights. The Bible says we are not like that. He said, we use God's mighty weapon, not worldly weapon, to knock down the struggles of what human reasoning and to destroy what false arguments. Human reasoning, human reasoning, and what false arguments. We're going to explain that. We're going to go deeper. He says, for well, we mighty weapon to no so knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false argument. Walk with me. Let's see another translation. American Standard Version says, he says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. For the weapons of our weapons are not flesh, but the mighty should go to the casting down of strongholds. Walk with me. I'm going somewhere. Let's see TPT. What does Timothy say? Timothy says this. He says, For although we live in the natural realm, although we live in the, the natural realm is a realm that we can see. Although we live in the natural realm, we don't wage a military campaign employing human weapons. Although we live in the physical realm, we do not want wage war, employ human weapons to fight this battle. I'm going to start that episode. I'm going to work with me. 
We do not know the ministry campaign and find the moment of using manipulations to achieve our aim. It's not what to do. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. Let me read that again. He said, or, or don't believe in the natural realm. We don't wage a military campaign employing human weapons. Using manipulations to achieve our aim. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. So in other words, people hide behind a veil. In other words, when the Bible speaks about warfare, it's not the things that we can see. It's not the battles that will fight physically. So that defenses, that structure, that battle that we tend to fight is here. How people treat us, the things people say to us, our battles are more internal than external. The battles we fight every day, even in our Christian world, has to do a lot with our minds. How we process things, how we see God, how we see life, how we, our outputs and our affect in life is all here. He said, don't we, don't we war? Our warfare are not the physical, they are spiritual. So if we go down to if we go down to 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 the Bible, that's why it's a casting that imagination. Where does imagination lies? Your mind. That's right. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, where does high things run? Can you see high things? But you bring them down to the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity. Every thought to the obedience of God, where it stops. So it stands to reason that this warfare we fight is where? Our mind. Our relationship with God starts from our mind. How we go through lives starts from our minds. A translation in the Bible says, that we bring down the culture of this world. That our warfare or our mindset or our spiritual battles is what to change or not to conform or to dismantle the culture of the world. If I may ask, what is culture? Dictionary says culture is the way of life of a people. Am I correct? Now, most of, it, most of all the time, when you were not born again, you walk according to the custom, the tradition, and the culture of this world, true or false. Now that you are born again, you have to dismantle that structure. You have to dismantle that culture in your mind. Because when the Bible says that our work they are spiritual, to bring down what? To bring down fortresses. It means that a culture that is stabilized in our mind is what? Is a fortress. Now for a fortress to be built, it means it has to go deep down, then up. Am I correct? Now when we were born, or when we were growing up, there are some things that became ingrained by reason of either nature or nurture. When I say nature, it has to do with the environment you were born. The things that nature gives you. But when I speak about nurture, it's who grew you up, where you were born. The tradition, the custom, and the way of life of the people is the nurture, how you were brought up. Now when you were born, that two things plays a critical role, nature and nurture. Now the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, now that you are of age and you know, you have an understanding, you have the knowledge that Jesus is the Son of God, you do what you transition from the state in the world to come into the life of Christ. Now when you come into the life.
why or when you come to the kingdom of God, there are customs, there are traditions that we ought to abide by. Everybody follow me now. So when we come into that life, there are structure. So when we become born again, we don't just live life in the physical. We now live life in the spiritual. Because he that is in Christ is a new creature. When you become born again, your spirit man comes alive. So the life you now live, you don't live of yourself. You live of the one that died for you. Because when you accepted Christ, you accepted him by faith. You know that you have the Holy Ghost by faith. And the Holy Spirit is the one that best with this with your spirit. That you are a child of God. And the Bible says, now that you are a child of God, you will bear witness in our spirit. And the battles will fight are spiritual. So when you come into that culture of the kingdom of God, God tells you, these are the weapons you need. When you become born again, you ought to know, number one, how the kingdom is governed through of us. You have to know with what weapon can I stand to, uh, to, to fight or to either to be on the offensive or the defensive to win those battles of life. Because as far as we are believers, the battles of life are very important. Everybody has battles and issues we go through as even believers. But one of the things that we have, or the confidence we have that we don't go through them alone. We know God did not promise us to take us out. He promised to be with us in the midst of our fire. So this is what differentiates us from the people of the world. That is why the Bible says that our mentality, we do not employ the strategy. We do not employ the ways of the world to fight this spiritual battle. Because spirituality is different from the physicality. So even take it further, spirituality controls the physicality. So when the Bible says that our weapon are not carnal, it stands for reason that the battles we fight are not the physical battles. And not the battles that we can see. So when we come here, we say that in our minds these battles are fine. So those pulling down imagination, those casting down or bringing into captivity, every hiding to the obedience of God has to do with us human reasoning and false arguments. Because these are the things that changes our lives, that changes the course of our destiny if we are not careful. So it's either you are won or you win. You are won. Somebody wins you over. That's what I'm trying to say. Either you are won or you win over the person. So when the Bible says our warfare are not carnal, it means that the way of the world or the ability to conquer anything is the first of all or conquer in our minds. It goes back. That will lay aside every weight. If you have the wrong perspective of who God is, is the way you go through lives. And that is what shapes your mindset. That is what drives your thought pattern. Because if you are grounded in Christ, your reasoning changes. Romans chapter 12 says what? I beseech you, brethren, by the by the promises of God, that you will present your body. As a living sacrifice, holy and accepted, in which the rhythm is, and be not what conform to this world. So when the Bible says don't conform, don't be like the world. Don't take up their culture. Don't take up their norm. Don't take up their tradition. Don't take up their way of life. But be what transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's only a transformed mind that can be regenerated. That is why most times when we, we, even when we are born again and we transition, the regeneration starts with our mind and a part of our mind is our soul. That is why I speak of salvation so much. The people can come to church for years, but yet they are not converted. Because why? Their warfare is still physical. Their warfare is still fleshy. They don't do things on their own. In order to win this battle of life, one thing is very paramount. Knowledge. It takes knowledge to win in the battles of life. 
It takes knowledge to rule when it comes to do with the spiritual things of the kingdom. The Bible says in, uh, I think it's John 17 verse 2. He said this is eternal life. That they may know the only true God. Knowledge. And Jesus whom in the What is knowledge? What is the word know? Knowledge starting from the root word know. It's the word to be aware. To be informed. In this world, to receive an information that is able to make to do what enlighten you. Receive information that enlightens. So when the Bible says that our for although we live in the natural realm, we don't wage war, a military campaign, employing human weapons, using manipulation to achieve our aims. Do you know people? They manipulate people to get things done. True or false? That is human nature. They manipulate you. They want something done. They have to trick you. They have to con you. They have to deceive you. They have to manipulate you. So get what they want. But the back to when you manipulate people, it means to work in the world. That's what it means to work in the world. To be carnal. To do as the world does. But when you are regenerated. But instead, our spiritual weapons are energized. With divine power to effectively dismantle the person behind which people hide. Let me explain that. When the Bible says our spiritual weapon, spiritual weapons, do you know we have weapons? But our weapons, the Bible calls them that they are what? They are spiritual. Now, for you to have spiritual weapon, it stands to reason that for you to operate in spirituality, you have to have knowledge, true or false. And where does this knowledge come from? The mind. It comes from the mind. The knowledge comes from the mind. Because if you look at that scripture, it says for the weapons and weapons are not kind of their mind to go to the pulling down of strongholds. What are strongholds? Structures that are unmovable. Structure that are rooted deep in whatever you believe in. Strong hold. Something that holds strong. So something that holds strong means it is not easily what? Removed. A typical example is um, everything we know is what? Whenever you throw or comes out, the law of gravity. Right? That if you, you nobody works on water. If you walk on water, you what in a little what sink. That is what that is a law that is what is is stable. It is truth. It is truth. It is fact, rather. But when Jesus came, that law changed. True or false? Jesus walked on water. Now I'm trying to say struggles are things that are rooted deep, that are not easily uprooted. So when the Bible says that we have this one, we have these weapons, these weapons that are mighty true God to pull down strongholds. Let me give a typical example. Holy Spirit, help me now. So that example was an example. Okay. Uh -huh. As I'm gonna, I want to relate something. I want everyone to grasp to the internet of which I want to explain it now. A stronghold, a strong. Okay. Let's say, for instance, now, everybody, everybody going in to get a job. Everybody going in to get a job, and you have to submit an application to get a job. And everybody that goes in, the boss tells them, "Oh, when you get into the company." These are the rules of the company when you get the job. These are the rules. It means that the rules are what are fixed, that it doesn't bend for anybody. Now, one of the rules is that you come to you come to office what at 8:30. I'm going somewhere. I'm trying to, I'm trying to relate. That's going to be So that is a that is a that is a, 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 a leveled rules. So it means that that has been going on from from the inception of the company. It has been like that. Or rather, that's a strong rule. It don't really relate what I'm trying to. I'm trying to give a typical example to bring down the strong. A strong rule is those are what? 
When I pick a stronghold, those are, are images or, or thoughts or mindset that we have formed in our minds. Okay, a typical one is that there are no good men. Let's use Antigua. Right? There are no good men in Antigua. So every woman that goes through every man comes out and says, all men are wicked. Right? Now, that's because of you went through, you already have a, you already have a, 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 a pre-notion that there are no good men in Antigua, right? Now, when you take a man, because of the pre-notion you have, you tend to look through that same lens that there are no good men, and you meet a wrong man, and the man deceives you and hurts you, and the relationship is broken, and you go your way. So you have confirmed that saying that there, was, there are no good men in Antigua. That becomes what? So every man you meet, you hold that mentality, right? That there are no good men. Now, that mentality becomes a stronghold in your life. I'm going somewhere. Now, when you become born again, now you want to date somebody. When you become born again, the Holy Ghost has to renew your mind. It means for your mind to be able to be renewed, you need what? Knowledge. Romans 12, 2. He said, be not conformed. The conformity of the world tells you that there are no good men in Antigua. That while you were not born again, you went through this place and you were heartbroken, you were deceived, and the relationship did not last. That was a production. That became a struggle as far as you are concerned and has to do with the relationship with any man. Not that you were born again. The Bible teaches you, you already have that mindset. That no matter the man I meet, all men are the same. Now when you become born again, that analogy, that mindset, that perception becomes a stronghold in your life. That when you meet a man, the first thing that you think, he wants something. True of us. So you don't, you don't see the good in him. You only see what he wants. Or what he can get from you. Now when you become born again. And the Holy Ghost begins to work on you. And you begin. Your mind begins to be transformed. By the word of God. God begins to tell you. I created all men. That there are good. There is good in every man. But what happened. They allowed themselves. To be used by the enemy. That is what that says. Let me read it for you. He says to develop or effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. So it becomes like a face, like a veil the enemy puts in front of you. That all you see is that there are no good men. Men cannot be trusted. But as your mind begins to be renewed, as you begin to receive knowledge, I hear people say knowledge is what? Power. But do you know knowledge is actually not power? I'm going to explain. If you have knowledge, what do you do with knowledge? Does the knowledge, when you say see knowledge here, do you have power when you have the knowledge? This is knowledge. Take. Hold on to this. I give you knowledge and you have the knowledge. What good is knowledge with you? Power. The knowledge becomes power. When you apply it to you. So it stands for reason that the application of knowledge becomes power. So no matter how much I tell you, this Bible can help you. The word of God is able to change you. The word of God is able to make you a different person. But if you never go through the word, or if you go through the word and you never apply the word to yourself, it's nothing to you. That is why the Bible says, it is not them that hear the word. Not them that hear, but they that not just only hear, but do the word at the word's word. That, 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 that's what causes change. When you walk the word, the word works for you. When you tell yourself, this is what I, this is what I am, this is what I know, this is what I grew up with, there has to be a different way. My mindset has to change. Now that I am in Christ, the world tells you, see before you believe. If you don't see, you don't believe. But when you come into Christ, when you come into this kingdom, the Bible tells you, believe and you shall see. Believe and you shall receive. Like how? I have to see it first before 
I believe it. But the word of God tells you, believe, then you will see it. So he's trying to tell you that knowledge changes. I think uh, uh, some time ago I told you that there are different kind of knowledge. There is a self-knowledge, the awareness. Oh, I know I am a girl. I know I'm a boy. There's a scientific knowledge that every human comes from a cell. A unicellular organism. We are multicellular organisms. That's scientific knowledge. But there is a knowledge of the word of God. That knowledge is what changes you. That knowledge is what will transforms your mind. That when you have the knowledge of God, and when you have that knowledge of God, it becomes of a spiritual weapon. A spiritual weapon. Let me explain. If you are the kind of person that the enemy keep bombarding in your mind that you are not good enough, no matter what you do, you cannot accomplish it. You are not good enough. You will never amount to nothing. And you keep hearing that word. It keeps bombarding you. Boom, you. So no matter how much you try to strive, it keeps hitting you. You can't amount to nothing. You can never be nothing in life. You are not good enough. You are not beautiful enough. You are not this enough. That is a stronghold. That if you want to take a step forward, when that thought comes, you, want, you, you, you go back in fear or you shiver in fear and tell you, I can't do it. It's not for me. But when you have the knowledge of God, it begins to change your mind and tell you, hey, listen, you can do all things through Christ. Hey, listen, you can be anything you can want to be. Hey, listen, I created you wonderfully and prayerfully. Hey, listen, you are the apples of my height. Why? The knowledge of God begins to impact you. Now, when the knowledge of God comes in you and your mind begins to change, this argument, this human reasoning that tells you you are not good enough, this false accusation that says you are too short, you are not qualified, you can't do it, you won't amount to nothing. Now, by the reason of knowledge, the word of God tells you that, hey, listen, you can do all things. So when the enemy tells you that you can't do it, what do you say? I can do it. Why? The word of God says so. That is knowledge. So when the Bible says that our weapon are not the physical things that we see, that they are the spiritual things, it means that when you receive the knowledge of God, your mindset changes. How you see things change. How you see people change. How you see yourself change. So when the enemy bombards your mind and tells you, hey, you will not amount to nothing, you tell you, no. I know who I am. I know who's got me. I know whose child I am because the word of God says so what the word of God comes to do it becomes of your defense and that stronghold will, will be put down because you have the knowledge and there is a change there is a renewing so most of the time our warfare are not people not people it's our mind our mind teaches us how to deal with people, true or false. If, if you don't know better, when somebody insults you, you insult them back, right? Now, <laughs> now, when you know better, and people insult you, you look at them and say, you know what? It's out of their insecurity. That is why they're insulting me. Do you always realize that people can't talk in front of you, they talk behind you? Why do they always talk behind you? Because you are ever ahead of them. For them to talk in front of you, they have to be in front of you, right? But because they are behind you, so it means that they will talk, be, they talk behind your back because they are behind you. So you have this confidence that no matter what people say about me, it is not the truth. Knowledge. This is how, this is how we'll fight our battles. I was going to sing a song. I just remember, this is our Bible battles. This is how we win our battles. When the Bible speaks about warfare, it has to be the war that the enemy wages in our minds. The saying that does is, do you know when you, when you, when you commit a sin, right? It, it, it's not just an action. When people sin, listen, when you, when you have this knowledge of God, right? Sin becomes inconsequential. 
In other words, sin becomes the least. Because why? You understand and you know that in this kingdom, the Bible says that sin will not have dominion over you. In this kingdom, the Bible tells you that you are seated in heavenly places with Christ. In this kingdom, you are above sin. So with that understanding, your mindset changes. I am a child of God. I am born of God. So he that is born of God does not commit sin. That's what the Bible says, right? That knowledge tells you that when the enemy tries to tempt you, you tell yourself, no, I am above this. Because why? The warfare has to do with what? Your mind. The reason people come to church and nothing happens to them is because their mind has not been transformed. Their mind has not been renewed. I think I asked that question two Sundays ago. That when something happened to you or somebody pressing or you're being oppressed at night while you sleep and you struggle so that you just don't want, Jesus! The response is, did you, how did you call Jesus? Was it in fear? Or was it the revelation of Jesus you had? What is going to be your response? That when you wake up, you have this, you're panting. And you look everywhere, look everywhere. Is he gone? Is he still here? Because you call Jesus in fear. The difference is that when you have the knowledge of who God is or what Jesus came to accomplish in your life, you know no devil in hell can compress you. No demon, I don't care who their father is, whether the devil or not, can come see you at night, to come bury you at night. Because what you have knowledge. He said this knowledge we have, this sense we have, this wisdom we have, it is not the world. It is, I think James put it like this, it is not sensual. Sensual means it is not of this world, not based on our feeling. It is based on our revelation of God. So when you close your eyes to pray, you don't go to God in fear. You go knowing that, you know what, I am a child of a king. That when I approach my father, I don't beg him. Knowledge tells you that. That when you stand before God, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 1 verse 8, he said, God Christ has made us king and priest before our God. So when you want to approach your father, you know that you are a king. You know that you are a priest. How do, what is a demino? What is the composure of a king? They are bold. Am I correct? And they are very what? Precise. And when they go in, they command things. The Bible says in Proverbs that when the word of a king is there is power. So when you go before your father knowing that you are a king, you place a demand. You don't say, demon, I command you in the name of Jesus. Come now, go out, come out now. <laughs> no. You go in this confidence. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, he says, Jesus says, all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Therefore, go. The Bible says, I, Jesus, I came. But now I go to my father and greater things shall they do. Jesus gave me that authority. So when a thing will stand before you, you have that knowledge, you have that confidence that in this kingdom, in this battle, we do not fail. Knowledge. That is how spiritual battles are won. That when you go to your father, you don't beg him. God, I don't know what is happening. Please help me now. No. The Bible says that we are king. I think that it just, uh, no, John 22, 28 says, he said, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established. So when you go before God, you decree it. God said it. I believe it. And that circles, I don't care what my situation looks like. Because he said it, it is. Knowledge puts you above. And when you have knowledge, there is an enlightenment you receive. God is God. Listen to this. The Bible says, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Right? 
James says, fear has torment. God has not given us fear. And fear has torment. So he that operates in fear will be tormented by it through a force. Now, because God has not given so when things happen, your first response should not will cause you not to operate in fear. When you have the knowledge of God, let me take it further. He said, God has not given us to fear, but of power, of love, and of this what? Sound mind. Knowledge makes your mind sound. Knowledge, the application of knowledge is what? Power. That when you stand before God, you know God loves you. That you know God is seated in heaven for your sake. That when you stand before the enemy, you are bold as a lion. That it doesn't matter who stands before me. Look at David and Goliath. The Bible says Goliath was big. And when David approached him, David looked like a small boy. He was a small boy. And Goliath said, am I a dog? That you will bring this one, this small boy, to contend with me. And the Bible says, Goliath cursed David in the name of his God. If you stand before somebody that is big, it stands to reason that you can get intimidated, right? Oh, yes. But because David had the Spirit of God, he said to Goliath, You see you? You see you? You that talk bad, you this uncircumcised Philistines that cause God's people to be afraid, you, I will take off your head. What gave him the power? Knowledge. That it doesn't matter the mountain that stands before you. The Bible says, Who are thou mountain, all Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plague. It takes knowledge for you to address every mountain. So when we talk about spiritual warfare, we're talking about the battles of our mind. We're talking about the knowledge of God that causes our mind to be renewed. That knowledge causes us to walk in power. The Bible says they sleep. They slumber because they don't know who they are. Jesus said to them, do you not read the word of God? That the word of God calls you God, but you die like men men. Why do they die? They lack knowledge. This knowledge that is able to renew your mind. The Bible says you are God. How come you operate like a chicken? How come you operate so scared? And we think that the devil is a big bad. The devil is not a big bad, whatever it is he is. He is a created being. God spoke things and they came to be. I bet God spoke the devil and he showed up. But the Bible says God communed with the self to create us. The Bible says he makes us a little lower than Elohim. So it stands to reason that we are even higher than angels. <laughs> this is he said, are, are angels not ministering spirits that does the beating of the saints? So it stands to reason that we have the ability to command angels. Oh yes. He made us a little lower. He said, who is man? That you are mindful of him. For thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim. Elohim is God himself. We have the power, but it takes knowledge for there, for there to be a shift in our mindsets. All oh, this false accusation, you can't do it. How do you think it's possible? It's not possible. Don't bother yourself. It's not going to happen. You will not amount to nothing. You can't do it. You see you, you will live your life all like this. You want this, you want that. It's a lie. The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Knowledge. And it shifts your mindset. So because the greater one is in me, it therefore means that I can do what? Anything. Because the power of creation is in me. So I am a creator. And I can create the future I want. I can create the life I want. Because why? Your mindset changes when the knowledge of God comes. Here. Spiritual warfare. So when you pray, you have this confidence that no man can take my life without my permission. Mm -hmm. 
You have this confidence mm. that it doesn't matter what my situation looks like. I know God mm. is with me. Amen. That when you go before Him, the Bible says, if we go before Him, our conscience does not want to judge us because we know that we are this. Ah. So we see God when our mindset change. We don't see Him as a father that holds a sword that if we do wrong, He will beat us. No. Mindsets, knowledge of God gives you an edge over your enemy. So when the Bible says lay every lay aside every weight, those things are those easily be said. Do you know something? People are so well, how do I call it that? People are so weak to things, to people that they can't say no. They can't something as easy as a uh, food. They just seem, they just want, they are not hungry though. They are full. But because the food is entering their eyes, everything like that, they just want to eat it. And they are full. But because it's there, they are creeping. They can't tell you, see you fool? I can't kill you, you will kill me. So you better pull up. We have the ability. We are king. We are God. Have this revelation. Our life with Christ becomes easy. He said, we don't want to see, see, instead our spiritual weapon, that spiritual weapon, that one weapon we have above everything is knowledge. Look at the six. That's right. He said, casting down every imagination. Where is the imagination from? Your mind. Your mind. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You bring it down to the obedience of Christ. Bring it into captivity. Every thought to the obedience. So it means that there is a thought and there is your thought. There is a thought. Thoughts are the ones that are suggested by the enemy. Now the thought comes. What do you think? How do you operate? When an operation happens, how do you respond? Do you respond defeated? Or you stand on the knowledge of God and bring every thought to the obedience of Christ? It takes knowledge to win the battles of life. It takes knowledge. There has to be a shift in our mindset. There has to be a shift in our perception. There has to be a shift in our outlook in life. Because the Bible says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, keep no room to the devil. It's the room you give him, he operates from. But when you know better, <laughs> I heard the story of a man of God that went to sleep. And apparently a demon came and took him from his bedroom with the bed and everything and carried him outside. <laughs> and when he woke up and saw that he was outside, he just said, listen, you demon that take me, took, took me outside, if I wake up in the morning and you don't take me out, take me back in where you got me from, you see what I do to you. And he went back to sleep. And when he woke up in the morning, he was right back in his room. What gave him that confidence? Knowledge. That no weapon formed against me shall prosper. The Bible says, though they come in one way, they shall flee in seven ways. The word. The knowledge of the word of God teaches you how to do warfare. Teaches you how to fight this spiritual battle. He said, even as the enemy comes as God, the Lord will raise a standard against them. No matter how forceful they come, no matter how much they come like a thought, what does the standard come to do? Push them back. He said, we have this, 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 this treasure in eating this. We have this treasure. The power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the iron has the ability to give you this knowledge. Why not use it to your advantage? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time. Any question? Whew. Glory to God. You say what? Battles. Spiritual warfare. At this time, I'm going to turn it over since we do not have any question. I'm going to turn to Apostle. 
Amen. Amen. Glory to God. With all that, um, Jesus, with all that, you know, message and everything, that studying and that word tonight, I, I, I don't want to say much because, I mean, it was, I, I eat, I drink, and I enjoy it. Amen? Glory to God. And when, when I'm around knowledge, one thing you must know about me, I, I listen very, very well. When I hear a word, I swallow it like you know. You, I love dumpling, right? And when you see, when you see, when you see, good word, man, is that I'm eating a plate. I don't plate my food. I don't plate and and thing with gravy. You know? Yes, man. It me feel good. You know. So I just want to say that um, Bible study is very important. And a lot of times you see Sunday service. People turn out, but on Bible study you don't see, you know, a lot because you don't, you don't, you don't get, they don't understand the, the seriousness about studying the word. This is where you grow. This is where you, your spirit come alive. This is where you understand. All right. Every 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 good man of God and good woman of God, ask them where they grow. They will tell you Bible study. That is where you grow. So I'm encouraging everyone, whether you're on the line, you're watching from wherever you're wherever you're watching from over the world, just know that Bible study in any ministry is very, very important. Uh, you know, every night before we, we go to our bed, ah, uh, these these guys must read up. They must read and 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 say scripture from the little to the big. Yes. And I teach them now: study the scripture in the day and come and say it in the night, and describe it for me, because it is very very important. I am telling you, because at the end of the day, it must inside of you. And when the word is in you, you look, look. You see, I'm sitting down there, and the word hit me. Holy Ghost just because the word that she's speaking it's already in me. So it come alive in me and activate. So immediately I'm saying to myself, yo, Dev, you know, you know what she has here, you think. If you just test me. Because it come alive in you. Because it is in you. Amen? Glory to God. Let us let us just um close, amen. And give God glory. And we're going to go home and be back here on Sunday morning. God bless your social media. God bless you so much. Um, if you want to know more about us, amen, you can go to Dave Osborne Ministries.org or Christ Followers Deliverance Ministry.org. Amen. Glory to God. Or you can go on Facebook right there or YouTube. Amen. Prophet Dave Osborne or Apostle Dave Osborne. We have the group page called Count Your Blessing. Amen. Glory to God. If you go to Facebook, you will see Count Your Blessing. Amen. And you can, it's a group page. You can go there. You can ask to join. And amen. We will have you in the name of Jesus. Also, you have the Christ Followers Deliverance page. And you have the Dave Osborne Ministry page. And you have the Apostle page and the private page. Amen. You can go there and you can learn a lot. Amen. Glory to God. And if you want to be a give of the ministry, there's a lot of link card there that you can press one button. And you will end up on the page and you do what you have to do for the honor and the glory of God. God bless you so much. See you on Sunday morning in Jesus' name at 10 o'clock. God bless you. Amen.